Welcome back, everybody. That's a good spin. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another installment of the Canyon Workbench series. When I threatened in the last one that the next one would be up, because when I say we're going to pick up right where we left off, what I mean by that is we're going to pick up right where we left off. Y'all remember this? You, you were here a minute ago. What seems like mere minutes ago. Uh, time has passed. It has. Uh, it's even hotter. It's a little cooler in here. Thank God. But uh, it's just as hot outside. Uh, there it is. I did flip everything. So now it's uh, winch outside the bracket, bracket outside the frame. I think that will put the spool in a place. I've set up like two servo winches ever. So I'm making it up as I go along. The body looks like it's going to fit. It's going to have to be cut down a lot. I did not mess with any of the links, nothing of the setup in the front. I did put the front drive shaft on. I was waiting for batteries to charge and I was bored. I also have some parts to go on the axle. Like I have diff covers. I know I have diff covers. I might have knuckle weights as well. I think I have knuckle weights as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to that. It's going to run for the maiden for the ghost ride after we get the body mount and after we get the rear end put on. Getting the rear end put on should be pretty easy because again, as I was waiting for batteries to charge, I took our buddy, the, the axle, which was sitting here in the axle with the shocks on it. And what I did is I put it to where the, the, the little, the upper link mount is just inside this little guy. Wheelbase is right about 320. You know what? I'm okay with a 320. So then I uh, threw the ruler down and I kind of measured roughly where that's going to go. This is more part of the Mias, Mias, Mias. So we've got 105 high clearance and we've got 90 millimeters straight. And when I say that, my measurement that I use is what I call shoulder to shoulder, is there to there. Because here's a little insight I would set the axle right there, I grab a ruler, I try to measure roughly from eye to eye. That eye to eye is roughly 150 millimeters. So we take our buddy Victor, the big ruler. It can be a ruler of any size. You obtain two of the rod ends that you will be using, and I will be using the angled ones that come with the links. And you set one with its opening, the eye, the opening of the eye at zero, and you set the other one at 150. And then you take a set, you do need two rulers for this, or calipers. And then you measure in between the two, and it is 105. That's why we got 105s. Now, these rod ends do have the pocket. So this could use a 110. Uh, and then these are 15 millimeters apart. So if you go to a 110 in the rear, you'll want to go to a 95. And you know what? Let's, let's do it so that we can cinch everything down. So we need a 95, provided we have a 95, we need a 95 straight. And we need a, what did I say, 110 high clearance? There's generally less use for the ones that get, like, the longest one in the bag is 135 shoulder to shoulder. So that's going to build you a 175 or 180 millimeter link if using these rod ends. You know, you put some Jados or something on there, you're going to be up around a 200 millimeter link. And if you're getting to a link length beyond that, let's just let's just be honest about it. Uh, you're going to have to custom. You're going to have to fabricate links. Is that titanium? That that might be titanium. If it's stainless, it's okay. Follow me. Follow me. Then we'll go to a link box and we'll grab two that we know are steel. We'll try to find some elements in the link box. That definitely feels like, I mean, I, could, I guess I could, wait, no. The easiest way to go is uh, Traxxas. They're black, so. Okay. Huh? 
This is very scientific. A little duller on the note. I can't tell. Because, uh, what is it? Martenza, well, okay, these are steel. These just, I got one. Hold on. I was digging around for, for my buddy, the tiny magnets, because obviously a steel link, straight steel link is going to be wildly magnetic. I mean, wildly magnetic. Stainless links, most of the stainless links, if you, if you give it a little, you can feel a little something because there is enough iron in there. These don't, so I found a link in the bin that is very close to the same length. And uh, weight wise, they feel too close. So unless these are both titanium, uh, we're straying further and further from science. I think they're just stainless. I think they're just stainless. If I still had an uninstalled uh, UA1 link, I could tell you if they were titanium or not. Oh, there's fun. It's the first bag that uh, the, the the balls aren't installed. Everyone so far they have been. Let's just operate from a position that they're just. I'm I'm going to be thinking about it the whole time. These do feel light. They feel light for stainless. I don't know. Nowhere is the package going to tell you. The package doesn't even tell you what length they are. I had to I had to silver sharpie it on myself. Uh, I I but the links have so far been good. I've had to assemble a couple sets of them. Everything has gone as one would expect. It's got a pretty good thread on them. We need our shock pliers. Now, as these are 110s, we are going to thread all the way down. With the 105s, I would have left a little bit of a shoulder out. Like, I would take this, that shoulder would go right to the edge of the plastic instead of setting it all the way in. I think setting it all the way in is also going to at least help us resist uh, having an end pull out. The Mios ends are a pretty good approximation of Traxxas rod ends. So they've got the big, thick Focus, please. They've got the big thick top on there. You're not gonna pull out that end. Uh, if one of these gets bound up and something else doesn't break first, what you're gonna get is, you're gonna get it, uh, it's gonna pull out. Doesn't matter how beefy that rod end is. It doesn't matter how high test it is. If you get into a position where you put enough torque on it, whether it be from the servo or the motor, you can indeed pull, pull the end out. And that is also very, that is dependent on how many times have your rod ends been installed and uninstalled and reinstalled. That's going to be the real determiner as to whether or not that rod end is going to pull out on you. Because I have... The habit, the proclivity, tendency to uh, reuse rod ends way too many times. Because when you are guesstimating your length lengths and your geometry, what happens is you end up building... Yeah, let's, let's check it on the checker. We're here. Uh, you end up putting links together and taking them apart over and over again. Particularly if you're reusing ends from axial so like 10-3 because they are these and the hole in the middle and the little strip at the end is because these are turnbuckles so you have conventional thread and reverse thread and then you forget and you thread the reverse threaded one onto the other side and now you've cross threaded it and it's now about half strength that has nothing to do with the link that has nothing to do with the rod and that has everything to do with the person putting them together which is this guy right over here. Also, definitely worthy of note, that is how the Mias ends are. They are threaded conventionally on one end and reverse on the other. We have one rod about one millimeter longer than the other. The hard part of that is we are high clearance and handed. 
And see, this is why you can't trust the shoulder. Shoulders matching. Shoulders matching. Pretty close to matching. And if we, okay, let's flip it and see if it goes one millimeter longer on the other side. They don't look one millimeter longer, but they're also not lining up on RPM duplicator. But they are this way. Okay, I don't, I don't know. It's definitely zeroed out. That's right. That's right on the zero. All right. You know what? We're gonna ship it. The uppers, no, the uppers need, the uppers could do half high clearance and half straight, honestly. But we'll do, oh, someone was asleep when they packaged that one, I guess. Had a couple extras. Maybe I have some extras. Do I get any extras? So I don't have to open that in the back? I do. Nope. I don't. No, I do. If every pair of uh, links comes with eight rod ends, you're going to have some leftovers. I am definitely a guy that is from the school of whatever the cheapest links I can get are. Those are the links. Oh, it's so much easier to put a straight link together. I don't like actively seek out $90 titanium link sets or anything. We do have a, we have a lot of link mounting options here. We've got 14 holes. Do I see 14? Four. Four, eight, 11. I thought it was five, five, four. It's four, four, three. So 11 link mounting holes. So if we're if we're off to one side or the other, we can we can adjust. We're just gonna go with the what did I say, 110s and 95s. We're gonna go with the 110s and 95s. And uh, that comes out to a link length of like 134. And I think I had it measured out about 135. So uh, millimeter short that'll kick the pinion down a little. In theory. We will uh we will definitely see. We're going full manual this morning. Ordinarily, I'd check these in a drill, but uh, this is for your safety as well as mine because I will tend to grab the rod end and uh, power it on the wrong way. That's how I got that in the last one. It's still there. Did not feel good. That The Amazon uh, rod end driver, it, it's actually... It's like four spinning knives. It works great, but uh, don't slip. Okay, that felt that felt right, though. I think I'm starting to see the little bulge right below the number where you've threaded the rod end in a little too far. And by you, I mean me, and by me, I mean us. Don't thread your rod ends on too far. It's, it's zero. It's zero. It might. It might be angled over so, oh, yeah, yeah. a fraction of a millimeter to one side. You know what I'm not going to do? That's right. You called it. Worry about it. I am not going to worry about it. I still have the... I told you. We pick up where we left off. Does this look any different to you? No. We deal with all of that. That is future me's problem. Future me will lament it at a future date. Today, we just throw things in boxes. And we're going to make sure some stuff doesn't roll away. The easiest way to do this is to pre-install all of the stuff on the axle. Well, that's not nearly long enough. Before we try to mount it to the chassis, I'm also going to need two M3x35s. I think I'm going to need three m 3 by 130 and 235. Now what I need all of you to do as a collective is not let me power this up with I need a lower. There we go. With the uh, servo mounted. Because I never centered that servo before mounting the horn. 
because I didn't have a JST plug installed on the speed control to power up the servo. So if we power that up now attached, ask me how I know, uh, there is that small chance that that servo horn is like 180 degrees off and it will try to turn that horn all the way around. And uh, 50 kg. I don't, I don't know if I need to say anything more than that. 50, 50 kg is enough sauce to, uh, to do absolutely that. It, w it will do its very best to spin itself around. I think this needs a lock nut. I can't remember. This definitely needs a lock nut. That went through way too easily. Look at that. I assembled, I appear to have assembled the links correctly because we do have a left and a right. We have a left and right for both the upper and the lower. Take this advice from me, friendly advice. When you're putting that upper mount on, put the lock nut on now. Don't, don't go... I'll get to it because that's what I did to the front axle. I just remembered that. There's no there's no spacer for the non-linked side and there's definitely no lock nut on it because then what you'll do, by you I mean me, is you'll take it out onto the course and you'll test drive it and the front end will fall off because that screw will work itself out pretty easily. And best case scenario is that when it falls off, it doesn't catch anything. Uh, generally, it will catch something, and it will take it will take that thing with it. I've just kind of leaned into silver lock nuts for this guy. I also have to dig through the bins and locate us a seven millimeter spacer for. See, there's just there's just nothing. There's just nothing there. Because when you tighten that down, I mean, it doesn't need to be super tight. You can get away with no spacer. I just, I feel really belt and suspenders about it. So I prefer to put a spacer on it. Seven and three and three is 10 is 14. So 14s for the upper link to chassis should be the pajama jammy jam. 35s for the lowers. We know that because they came from the before times. Now the only hurdle we have to try to overcome is don't mount the upper links to the lower link holes and vice versa and if you claim that you've never done it tell me your secrets because I would never claim that I've never done that because I've done it more than once uh, in a recent live stream I built a vehicle with the axle on top of the chassis and, and had the whole thing bolted together. So if we can make the mistake, we will. I'm really curious, uh, changing links midstream. Oh yeah, it's right, it's right, it's pretty much right there. Okay. I'm really curious what our wheelbase is gonna come out to. I don't have, I have neither spacers nor uh, screws to mount the shocks. I was gonna go with that hole right there. That's pretty close. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is not want to rebuild links. So I was intending to go one link hole forward, but it's not lining up with one link hole forward. It's, lean, it's lining up with a particular hole, which looks like it's gonna give us an, an, un, an unhappy, it's unhappy. So we're gonna have, we're gonna have to do something, but we will we will bolt it all together so we can show you when you've done it wrong. Not wrong, just not the way I like it. Uh, for me, uh, in terms of geometry, link separation that it's almost okay. Link separation is important because anti squat is in fact a thing that exists. Uh, and that is largely determined by the separation between the lower link and the upper link. Uh, we find this through this thing that we call empirical evidence, which is where you move the link and then you test it and you move the link and then you test it. So with these link length differentials, with basically 150s and 134s, you see the pinion angle is not 
quite like it could be leaned back a little more we would like a little more rear caster but yeah we've got room we've got room we can lean that back more so this pinion angle where the angle goes like that i don't want that if anything i want that pinion angle to pivot i want it to stay aiming up so i want the pinion angle so this is the pinion coming out i want the pinion to go like that so that the output is facing directly towards that output. And because we are in the uppermost, rearmost link mount hole, we're getting this, it basically doesn't change. See, there's the angle, the angle just stays all the way. Then it starts to point down. But it's still pointing at the same angle when we're right down right there. So I want more pinion angle change. And uh, I'm going to have to cut open another bag, I think. I think, I think, hmm, uh, I think I just want to be forward another, I, I want to be another, what is that? We need calipers for this. I want to be, I mean, we could do this by dialing it out, but I would rather not. I have more links here. Yeah. So we did 95s, we actually need 105s, which is kind of crazy because that's going to put rears and uppers really close to the same length but in the front the uppers and lowers are really close to the same length too i never really i didn't pay I, i've been calling this the not a 10 pro uh even though it's i mean it's it's mostly a 10 pro uh, it's like kind of as far as i can tell it's kind of a better option of a 10 pro um i didn't check the 10 pro to see what the length length differential is between uppers and lowers but the geometry is similar but not the same oh what did we come out at three twenty four I am absolutely a hundred percent fine with three twenty four three twenty four is nice uh, I do want to I'm, I'm not gonna make you endure it but I do want to change those rear links because if anything I would like them to be longer. So honestly, maybe a 10, 10 longer in the middle hole. So I had 95s, I need 105s. Pretty sure we got that. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just build them again. I'll just build them again. And then I'll see if we have fixed that pinion angle change and then we'll throw a drive shaft on it and then we can uh, kind of dry fire this thing, yeah? Probably not wheeling in this one. By the time we get done getting it rolling and uh, moving under its own power, uh, it's going to be way too hot outside. All right, we ended up with a very near... They're effectively the same length. Uh, had to get the rear uppers to about 148. See, that's the pinion angle I want. I want the pinion angle to be roughly parallel to the lower link so that the drive shaft is above the link. We want the links and the pumpkin to be the lowest things. If we go through the stroke like that and the pinion and therefore the drive shaft drop down below, that's not good. You're just gonna bash it into rocks all the time. So this guy in the front, he's right at the limit, but under compression, he's clear. So we'll see, we'll see how scratched up that gets. Also in the front end, you're making a bit of a compromise. I want to keep a lot of caster in the front. That's more steering angle. The more caster you have, the tighter your turning circle is going to be. And I like about that amount that the rear is more where I want it than the front. The front, I do, I'm sacrificing some pinion angle for some caster because when you're talking about one piece and a lot of axles are going to one piece nowadays, you don't really have that. Um, the, the clockable C hub uh, is becoming something of times of yore so we 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 adapt we ad we flow and we adapt going with the vanquish drive shafts thinking about just because of uh, pure continuity let's see how close this is to the correct we can go we don't need to but we can go one step longer female portion 
in order to, to cover up some of that slider bit. It's not, it's not terrible. It's also not optimal. I like, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you the front and I'll show you where I like to be generally. Let's get that lined up. That motor, I can, I can almost guarantee that the motor is going to rotate in the incorrect direction because the vehicle that it came out of before was non-portaled, but that motor was, it might be right. It might be right. So this is not an excessive amount of exposed shaft, but you can see because we have so little pinion angle change, we don't, we don't need that amount. It's still okay. The front is more where I like to be. See how there's a little, tiny little bit of spline showing? If we can full compress without binding, then we're good. This guy with so little change, and he's basically built to, well, we'll see. We gotta see him with, we gotta strap him back. We gotta strap down a battery. We will plug in a receiver. We'll have nothing mounted. This is basically just, oh, I th actually, you know what? I think I might have heard one of you. I think I might have heard one of you go, don't power it up. So we'll pull this out. We'll, we'll, you know what? We're going to detach it all the way. Let's, let's take the, for safety, let's take big horn all the way off. Okay. Now we'll slap some, uh, slap some rubber on it so that we can have it we can have it rolling 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 what what I probably don't have in the box are wheel nuts I do not because they do non flanges phalanges my recommendation to one and all is don't do non phalanges also if you can and this is great because I have it in the box to show it. Uh, do you see how the back of that is smooth? What you want is you want that. You want the sit. Focus on the serrations, please. You want the serrated. Because it will give you that last line of defense after you've reused your wheel lock nuts too many times. So instead of it falling off, the serrations might serrations might hold it on you know when you're distant from home and your wheel nuts fall off even I who does not have to travel great distances to get to crawling because we we got ahead of that and we just built the thing in the backyard uh, I still carry spare well out there out back in the first aid station in the little DeWalt tool tainer is uh, wheel nuts. Seven millimeter of M4 and M5, and the drivers for both, because if you haven't had a wheel nut fall off, to quote that kid, to quote that crab fisherman kid, where he says, you ain't no crabber. Uh, if you ain't had a wheel nut fall off, you ain't no crawler. Uh, you gotta be out there, not paying attention to uh, <laughs> proper <laughs> maintenance or anything like that, and uh, have parts of your rig fall off. I, I would like to think that we've all been there. So first, uh, first power. We're not going to plug in the winch right now. We're just, we're just, we're just not. We're going to get the servo. We're going to get motor direction. We're going to get the servo centered, which is what I wanted to do before, but I didn't have a plug for it. We do now. Uh, in terms of placing all the electronics, uh, I will need something to run the winch. And I usually gut like an SC400 or an SC480X, and I use that as a winch controller. Um, this guy is going to be on an RC4. We'll do the mix. We'll do we'll do channel mixing. Uh, I believe if memory serves, I can do cruise control mix and winch mix on an RC4. I'm pretty sure I did it on an RC4. I might have done it on an RC6. But if I can if I can mix both, that will be great, because then I can use okay, VR for that. Man, 
Might have to go back and watch my own video. It would not be the first time. I don't know. I think we're not even paired, are we? I don't think we're paired. Okay, we're on model two, so we're not gonna we're not gonna try to boot up anybody else. Did I pair it? I don't remember pairing it. Uh, we have a little drawer in a bin over there in a servolite that says receivers. And uh, there's like half a dozen radio link receivers in it. I just happened to grab the one that's paired to... We might as well ID seed it while we're here. This is Goldie Rocks radio. Gold, gold, same as a thematic thing. Uh, we will get to... Okay, so ID seed. We're going into ID seed. We'll turn it on. We'll go to ID05, and then we'll, we'll go out of there. And then we notice it's blinky now. See the blink? Because they've lost each other. And then we'll go like this. And now it's going to reconnect with ID seed. So if I had, there it goes. Wait, forward or backward? Make your guesses now. We're gonna, we're gonna hit the trigger. Dang it! It's always backward. It's always backward. Uh, you got a 50-50, but you don't. It's definitely less than 50-50 because I seem to hit opposite direction of rotation. Like, I, I don't, it's gotta be 70% of the time. Has to be. Pull the plug. Would you like to know, okay, for those familiar with Hobbywing products, uh, the programmer port is right here at the end of the switch. It's got this little plug in there. Would you like to know how bad I am about putting that plug back in? Would, 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 you, would you care to know? Oh, okay. Whee! So out in the fleet, two, four, six, eight, or at least eight vehicles that don't have the little plug. I mean, if I'm going to take them out and the weather looks inclement, maybe I'll just uh, I'll give that a look. Let's see what our settings are at. Yes. 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 Five. Value. We go to two counterclockwise. Yes. Uh, BEC at 7.4, though it doesn't matter. Well, the winch would prefer. Drag brake at five. Drag brake rate at five. Uh, max reverse at 75%. Okay. Click it. Clack it. Rack it. We're going to put the plug back in. Because we shouldn't have to touch it again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's not. Let's not. What are we looking at at the top? Oh, that, uh, that's, <laughs> uh, the mesh feels okay. It might be, it might be a touch tight. We're like, we are noiseless down here. Oh, oh, deep woods be gripping. Um, how are we sitting on terms of, in terms of rake? This is why. This is why. This is why the body hasn't come near us. Oh, it's a flexi boy. That's that what eyeballing? That's that's very close. Um I think the rear is just about on. I don't I don't think I would mess with that. I would like the front there. Now we can do that with preload. We're basically almost sitting the panhard mount down. It's a little low in the front. Now, on the rock, that might not be explicitly negative because the front is gonna try to rise. So if we go into the rock over drooped in the front, it's not grotesque. It's not, the rear angle looks fantastic. It's not bad. It just, there's the part of me that is like, you should change that. So, you know what, for right now, we'll do it the easiest possible way. 
we'll put about seven, maybe eight millimeters of preload in there. Yeah, there we go. Hey, this is fixed. Still got a little bit of rake, a little bit of forward rake. Forward rake is absolutely fine because when you climb, what's going to happen? The front's going to droop out and the rear's going to compress and you'll take out that rake. So that little bit of rake is going to help make these bite harder to breach over, theoretically. Um, the variables will do what the variables do, which is absolutely run amok. Also, running the 1.2 pound incision red band spring, stock springs from a carbon, what we're going to find out in fairly short order is... And the shocks, oh, I needed to kick over a spline, don't I? Yes, I do. I hate when it sits perfectly centered when you need it to not be centered. How dare you not do the thing that I want you to do? How dare you be perfectly centered with no trim? When for this guy, yeah, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to cull the endpoints on that. This is a fairly common practice, honestly, with chassis mounted steering, uh, even more so with laydowns. This servo is not laid down, but we do have a bit of the laydown situation here, which is we're starting with the servo horn clocked over so that we can run a drag link that is, and see, it's it's too far over, but we can we can we we can trim it back to where we need to trim it. I don't care for uh, sub trim. I mean, it is a necessary evil, but if we can get away with not using it, this is why I tend to favor a turnbuckle for the drag link because then we can precisely adjust it. But before we got the steering hooked up, what we had done here. I think, is basically get, is that too long? That's way too long, that's gonna hit the chassis. We had gotten the pan hard and the drag link as close together in length as we can. Well, as close as we're prepared to do right now. We could get it closer later, there'd be later closer. But, oh yeah, that's, that's way over. We might need to, we'll see. I, uh, I don't like to go past 40, say 40 or 50 points of sub trim. If we have to go past that, we will recenter the servo, regardless of how much, it times, how much time it takes to do that. Okay, let's just, we'll try sub trim first. Oh, it's negative. Negative subtrim. Because, yeah, we're just going to have to recenter it. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, it's pretty close. It's 61. It's not, it's not optimal. And also, um, we measure torque at one inch. Uh, this horn, I think, is 35 to the outside because we we want to clear all the stuff and we want to keep our links parallel. We'll do it this way. It's really easy. Uh, if you just double uh, tap the buttons, yeah, you can see how much trim is taken out from the points of sub trim. But here's why I don't think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a big problem. We're just gonna take both steering endpoints down to like 30%. Uh, because we're running a horn that is so long, we are exchanging torque for clearance and speed is gonna come in because it's moving much further out at the end. So, so there's that. And we did the thing that we always do. Note it. Learn from my mistakes, if nothing else, which is check your steering direction before you put the sub trim in. 
We put in 61 points of sub trim and the steering needs to be reversed. So now we go back to sub trim. The beauty is if you just press these at the same time, you take it right back down to zero. And we were negative, so now we need to be positive, yes. So it should be 61 points positive. And it looks, it looks like it, it looks like it is about, okay. We can go back to setting those endpoints, even knowing the whole time. We're just gonna go until it touches. Okay, we're at about 60, it's odd, that's coming up again, 61% throw. Let's go to the other one. That's why it's good to have Get yourself a surface that isn't ah, that isn't super sticky. Something like a bench mat, a uh, no wood floor, something where the tires can move easily. When you do this on full uh, size vehicles, we use what are called grease plates, where you take two metal plates, you put grease in between, them, you slap them together, and then they can turn easily on each other. I should build grease plates for for setting servo endpoints, uh, and I just thought of it now, and maybe I'll think of it again in the future. Yeah, axle swing is next to none. It's not super optimized, uh, but for something that is going to be ghost ridden, it's this. This is nearly perfect to where we want to be. So let's just make sure most of the stuff is out of the drive shafts. It doesn't all have to be out of the drive shafts. The tires are going to be the dangerous one because these deep woods. They love to grab things. This is, again, Legacy Fusion. Good old Deep Woods. I mean, I think there's at least a potential to do the thing. There's at least a potential. We, get, we can get somewhere make sure that doesn't fall back into her nose. It was pointing up Marie's nose for a while, and I didn't notice because my head is over here and the camera's over here, so I didn't see it. I think we're we're getting near something. We're, we're approaching something. I'm not happy with the amount of sub trim that I had to dial in. I'm not happy with the amount of preload. But that's why we ghost ride. Because ghost ride is here to show us gross. It's the gross ride, the gross ride, because we want to see, it will tell us pretty right away. Uh, first touch of rock, are the tires right? Like, is that wheel tire insert combo, is that doing it? Uh, is the suspension doing it? Is the 1.2 pound going to be too soft? The damping feels okay when I go like this. So they don't feel wildly under damped, but at the same time, the springing might be too soft. Springing too soft, that's a, they are leaned way down. We're probably close to 45 degrees on this one back here. Uh, springing too soft is a great place to be because the giant springboard over there is absolutely covered with springs. Yeehaw! Yeehaw, boys! We're not going for a yeehaw, boys. We're going for a carve up. Okay, so. We do this very, very scientifically. We have, we have deep seated uh, superstitions. It doesn't have to be the same pen, but it has to be blue. We are gonna get this to sit down and we're, what are we gonna use? So we've got these little, these little fellas. We're gonna use those little fellas to line up with the rails. And sure enough, it looks like the rails are right in between. Looks like the rails are right in between. So there's the four. They're right outside those four. And then we're gonna just uh, we're gonna pass the Rubicon instantaneously. We're gonna get our.
brand our brand new Dubros. We finally replaced our Associated Factory team that had seen oh so many things. We are going to use a combination square. It's still one of my favorite uh, things on the internet where the wife is complaining that her husband asked her for the square and she brought 10 things and then he was like, no, this. And she's all, that's a triangle. And, uh, you know, she's not, she's not wrong. It is a triangle. We're going to get close-ish. Uh, when we have to clear frame rails like this, we're going to have to cut this body a whole bunch. We're going to start by cutting less. We're going to cut less than we need. So I think, I think the, the over under line is probably about, there, we'll do right there. Never cut up to a sharp corner. Give yourself a little, uh, give yourself a little one of these. Better to cut up higher and leave yourself a radius because you've cut it square, the body will tear right there. Guaranteed. Uh, that's like directing the body. Hey body, please tear at that spot, especially where you have this chance of it binging off of the chassis rails all the time. This is just the, the realities of it. I looked it up, 27 bucks for the uh, tuck cab, like $2 more than a creep. We got a lot of creeps. So, still went a little narrow. Better, better too narrow than too wide. I can tell by the half lower, even though it didn't fit. Uh, I can tell that we're not, we're not up high enough. I will do most, if not all, of this with the Dremel. We are trying to get it very rough. We're just trying to get it around the frame. Look at look how much lower I mean already, and we're not we're not anywhere near where we need to be. Okay, we're gonna go. I'm gonna use tip of the fender right there. We're just gonna go straight across. Using the mental. It's pretty straight. It's pretty straight. It's not bad. Straight across like that. We're most likely going to have to crop those fenders up as well. Yeah, we're, we're already getting down. We're getting down. We're, we're below the level of the sliders now. But I can see that clearance in the back, we can come way down in the front. We've got, oh, that's got to be 20 plus millimeters between the top of the servo and the hood. And I want to get the top and the servo and the hood close. If we have to crop these all the way out, that's fine. We don't have a carved up body here because I don't carve up bodies. But you know what I'm doing today? I'm carving up a body. So the first thing I could tell as soon as we started getting in we're cutting it, there's little polycarbonate flakes everywhere. Uh, 2200 too big, uh, particularly how uh, for how softly sprung this is. It had a real lean to that corner. Uh, slap a piece of Velcro on it, put an 850 on there. Uh, we seem to, as each build goes, like that's like four builds in a row that are all running on 850s. So uh, I was cutting and then I brought up a screen and ordered another pair of 850s off of Amazon because I'm starting to, starting to run out of 850s. So as I said, Dremel, Drummed it up about to the height that I thought it would be. And that depth is just to keep the body level. Uh, ran two screws up through, put the spacers on them, and got it to sit down where, okay, it could sit much lower, right? But then we're really going to have to carve this thing up. And you know how I am. I don't, I kind of don't want to, but we're going to do, we're going to do the carve up as necessary. Like I, you know what? That stance right there is absolutely fine. It's cut up to just below the level and look, the body stayed pretty straight when we drilled it. And 
the thumb screws because we're not using body clips it might be enough because this bottoms out in the front it might be enough we might be able to run this just like this worst case scenario we'll make a little bridge that goes across the chassis with a piece of velcro on it and then you just kind of press that against the velcro that that that's what i'm thinking at any rate because we're already going to get to a point where we have to carve this yeah we got the servo to about what is that maybe eight ten millimeters at the nose probably about eight millimeters of clearance at the back we're probably at like 12. uh we've got to do this so there's the line yeah you can kind of see it through the glare so there's the line better to cut too little than too much and why I wasn't ready to drop it even lower is because under compression, particularly at steer angle, we're going to have to cut a... Basically, we're going to have to kind of kill the look in the front. Like, it still has that fender line. So what I'm going to do is we're going to bring... So the flare will be gone, but we have this line. So we're going to go from right behind the headlight. We're going to go up right like this just to the bottom of that line and then we'll taper it right back down about to where the tape right there so that's that's the kind of the cut lines because it kills me to to really chop these up so there's that arc and then come across like that let's pop this off cut one side see how it looks like i say i try to stay under the lines and do as much work with the Dremel as I can. So we're gonna go all the way below the blue line here. Don't want I don't wanna touch blue line. And then for this, we're just gonna go straight across, which looks to be right under there. And then we can clean, we can clean that off as needed. So again, I, I like to cut right-handed because I am a right-handed. So the beauty of clear polycarbonate. I don't want to touch that blue. Don't touch that line. Now hopefully just removing the fender is going to leave us enough. See, that's still, it's still trucky enough for me. But I know that that, that clearance at steer lock is where it's gonna be. Okay, that's 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 not too shabby. Uh, the line kind of arced off. We need to cut it up a little more right there, but that looks that looks mad decent. Uh, you know what? I am gonna leave the front kind of boxed like that. We'll round it off, but I'm gonna leave it kind of boxed because honestly, I want to see what we get in terms of angry Lexan noises. If I round that over, that might be enough. This is probably about the width. What did I say? Were we 250, 255, something like that? Two, yeah, 255. So if anything, no, that's, that's pretty, see, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's carved up. But it's not too carved up. I'm kind of okay. I'm kind of. I'm kind of okay with this. Uh, if anything, I'm coming to grips with it now. Did my line move? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I had made a pre-trace, and then it's sitting down better now. So this blue line would go above the slider. All right. So second verse, we literally try to make it the same as the first come down right here make sure we don't touch the line stay below the line it can be ugly it doesn't have to be nice and where's that point so much glare and we go up from here just to the bottom of the fender line and then we'll try to copy what we did on the other side yeah, we use the corner of the headlight. I remember now. Come right across like that. All right. Now we cut that. We hope it's the same. 
We'll clean it up a little bit with the little uh, the windy grinder, and uh, then we'll see uh, we'll see what we're working with from there. Still plenty of room for electronics up front, which is great. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'm not saying I'm coming around, but maybe I'll be able to at least tolerably live with it. It still looks like a truck-ish. I uh, got into the gear mesh. It was a little tight. I think that just the included spur and pinion is not going to be the recipe for solitude. So we will run everything here is what I would almost call ghost ride perfect. I don't know if any of the link lengths are perfect. I don't know if the drive shaft lengths are perfect. Uh, there's a lot of things that could be spring rates, uh, wheel tire, everything. The core, though, everything under here, the core, uh, we're good. Chassis, that, I mean, it's no problem to change a spur and pinion. Like, it's not screaming at you, right? not it's not exactly loud so it's, it's a little noisy I think the front shocks have leaked out too much of their uh, precious life's blood uh, because we get a real right about there there's just nothing there's just no damp again perfect for a ghost ride because then we can blame it on uh, things other than driving it's not carved up too bad uh, I want to take a I use a uh, 80 grit sandpaper on a piece of wood to get these level. That one's got a little, let's see, is this side better? Yeah, this side's a little better. Uh, that's really hard to do freehand with something that's round. I want to leave the grill at that where we're just under the grill. That way we can put the decals on it and uh, we shouldn't have a problem. So this is what I would classify in Canyon standards as Ghost Ride Ready. We will address the winch later, you know, when we're getting into paint. Uh, fastener optimization, fairly close. I don't think there's a lot that we need to change out. It sits pretty nice, compresses pretty nice. Mias axles with chassis mounted steering. <laughs> it'll do the, uh, will it do the thing? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty on the quick side. I see a little, uh, you see the shiny, a little extra shiny down there. Yeah, that one's leaking out of the cap. That one's dried. That one's wet. Uh, both of these are so it's mo it's probably mostly this one. You can hear it. You can hear it stirring up its internal atmosphere. So we leave the body where it is in the hopes of locating the angry Lexan noises and the deep wood. Is it deep woods? What's a single deep woods? Is it just, is it a deep wood? Uh, the deep wood is an excellent choice for a ghost ride tire. I'm looking at the rack right now because it will be the noisiest of what I'm looking at. I would like to stay 465, 475 on this. I'm not gonna go down to like a class one or anything. I think this I think this build and this rig are pretty much set. Even though it's on portal, we could get away with a 4.5. We just don't have anything really in a 4.5. We're not looking at an incredible amount of ground clearance, particularly on these 465s as they are really bagging out on these inserts. These inserts are hyper soft. Okay, so in the next one, Ghost Ride, it is it's too hot and too smoke filled to even go outside. But what I can give you is an RTR. Put in, put in your guesses now, RTR. I'm gonna say five, five, four, five. Ooh, wait. Yeah, five, four, five. That's, that's where I'm going. Uh, suddenly, all of a sudden things are getting light. Uh, I can't tell you what five, four, five is in grams until the scale tells me. Uh, and luckily it is set to pounds right now. So we're gonna find out. This isn't, I think, you know, I think the body's gonna work. We'll see if there's too much bangerang Rufio, we will, uh, there's two holes right here in the chassis that won't get in the interference with anything. We'll make a little grabber. Ooh, maybe not Velcro, maybe a piece of Delrin with a slot in it. And then the back of the body will set down in the slot. Hmm, thinking thoughts. That was way up. 5.17. We're a hair above five pounds. 
with no weight reduction measures put into place. Half high servo will save you about 40 grams. You can go to a smaller bedding. It's got a fusion, legacy fusion. Outrunner with a, so if we had gone with the V40 and the Outrunner in here, that would drop another 80, 90 grams. No, we're not weight weaning in this. 5.17 RTR, AKA to the rest of the world. 2345, 2345. Is that a fortuitous number? I don't know. Could be. Uh, so, Ghost Ride in episode three. I think that's a pretty good progression. What I need you all to do, I need you to do a couple things for me. In between now and when we meet again, first of all, we're going to crowdsource the color. Is a part of me just wants to paint it gold, right? Just lean into the gold. Is that too on the nose? It can't be black because the missing link has gold in him and his body is black with gold flake. So that's already off the table. Uh, if you do purple and gold, it's the Lakers now. Uh, gold is a tricky color. These are not his wheels at all. His wheels are right here. So keep them in mind when you're thinking. So black, silver, and gold. It's like the it's like the Raiders, but with gold. These are going to be the wheels because I think those will look fantastico on there. And it's me us, me us, me us, me us, me us. Uh, he's going to get diff covers, uh, probably front knuckle weights, depending. Uh, we'll see if he needs them. You get drunk on the idea of he's getting slightly heavier by the gram as time goes. Sitting around that 2346. Uh, what color do we paint the body? Throw your suggestions in the comments. Um, we will find out how much more need be cut, if anything. Like I said, I am I'm on board with this. It's cut up, but it still looks it still looks like a truck. I am fine with this. Look how far we are from the belt line with that. That's fine. I'm absolutely fine. You can all see, also see how much there's just nothing. What is that noise? Oh, it's that. So, the, remember the two things. Comment below. What do you think about color? Because my default is just maybe silver is just to paint it gold. We don't have anybody that's pure gold. Uh, and along with that, as always, please, one and all, do your very best to have a good one, everybody. We will see you here in the next one. We will hope that he will drive into his own name. He's going to test on these. I would love above love if this guy works. These are deep woods. Those are deep woods. There they are. We've got a set of champs which are very new. These are feathered in a little. Why would I love for him to fit these? Well, here are some very weathered uh, deep woods, fully worn in on squid inserts, which are a bit firmer. So maybe we can split them up if these are too soft, but he is five pounds. Then what do you have right next to those? Oh my, it's another set of deep woods. I love a deep wood. And the problem is vehicles keep changing and being adapted and being adapted to changes. And we just keep, there's a set of hunks on the rack and they are on 3D printed inserts and, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh, yeah. We've got Swamp Claws, Baja Pros, pins of two varieties. We've got Yokohama Geolanders. We've got, we've got options. We've definitely got options. I would just love for him to go on Champs, AKA slash Deepwoods. We'll find that out together in the next one. So remember, do your best, shout out some suggestions for color, and uh, tune in for the next one.